Okay, well, hello. Thank you for watching. I um, wanted to maybe add something to the last video I did, or two videos ago, <clears throat> to explain something I might have left out. The video where I was talking about how I sell my art, I talked about um, putting the art onto a website called Fine Art America, which then also lists it on pixels.com, um, and that's where the greeting cards can be purchased or prints of the greeting cards um, and one thing maybe that was misunderstood you can also sell the the actual card itself the customer doesn't pay them the customer just contacts you and then you say to that customer what the price is going to be I have all of my cards listed at hundred five dollars usually just don't tell anybody this <laughs> <laughs> that's a joke it's $105 is what I list them at. that's three times 35 and I know some of you gave me pushback on that number that's what I price it at it's not always what I sell it for in fact it's never been it has never been what I sell it for I usually sell it for 45 okay I'll just tell you up front that's usually what they sell for and that's for the original card and it is signed and I want to show you some of the things that I do so I'm going to use this card because I don't think I've listed this one yet because it's it's not somebody you would know <laughs> somebody I might not buy the card because they don't know who the woman is and I don't even know who the woman is I, I believe I just got it off of uh, a video from the from YouTube from right here so anyway I want to show you how I would list this um, and I'll try to be quick I had another comment that I'm dragging these out too long so let me show you how I would not how I list it. I'm going to show you that a little bit, but I want to show you how I process this so that it looks good as a print. This is the original card, the actual paint on paper of the young lady with the floppy hat. Okay, so let me turn the camera around and I'll show you how I do that. Okay, so there's the card and I want to process it, take a picture of it and process it so that we can put it onto Fine Art America and Redbubble and Etsy and anything else the first thing I want to show you is my light source I have a light right here simple little light there it is and the light will illuminate the card pretty simple pretty simple basic photography 101 right now I'm going to use my phone and I'm going to take a picture of the card with my phone I'm going to show you that this is very simple stuff you do all the time so there's my phone and there's the picture of the card. I'm going to go out a little bit um, and try to line it up as best I can and then take the picture. Okay? So now I have the picture on the phone. Can you see that? Is it is it working? Oh, I'm not showing you the picture. I'm showing you the viewfinder. Alright, there's the picture on the phone. I'm going to show you how I process that now. So that's the next step. Let's do that. Okay, so the next step. So we have the photograph on the phone. And I have my iPad. I'm going to use the app called Procreate. So I'm going to airdrop from the phone to the Procreate, to, to the iPad. And it's called airdrop, and it should show up on my iPad. And let's see. It says it did it. I don't know if it did or not. It says it did it. Where is it? Well, anyway, so we're going to procreate now. <laughs> Let me find that picture. Hold on. All right, so now the picture that we want is on my iPad. And I'm going to process it with the Procreate app, and I'll show you how I do that right now. Okay, so I'm using uh, Pro the Procreate app. However, you might use um, you might use your own. You might use another photo processing app. I'm going to use Procreate because it's the one I use the most and it's one I'm the most familiar familiar with. I'm going to tell you every step of the way. I hope I don't take too long. The um, the the uh, Photoshop is a good one. Um, camera bag is one I've used in the past. I don't even know if that one's still out there. But any photo processing app is good. So now you going to specifically to Procreate now. I created the canvas as if I was going to paint. Now I do a lot of digital painting 
and just so you know with digital painting you can have a digital brush and you know you can paint with this with the stylus this is an apple pencil and you can uh, you know paint whatever you want that's not a very good brush I guess it's not what I use anyway but let's say charcoal so you can have different you can do different things with that and I do a lot of art using procreate um, I don't just do greeting cards however a lot of these pieces of art can be um, greeting cards but I want to show you specifically how to take this card and make it into a digital card okay so let me show you that so first I have to add the photo that we just took and there it is so there's the photo of the card you see now what I want to do is I want to make it this size now this size is 21 inches by 27 inches you can make it any size you want I just chose that size because it's nice and big and a card is going to be much smaller than that and it's better to take a large picture and make it small once it's pixelated you know once it's uh, digitalized I should say take a large one make it small it's a lot better to do it that way than to take a small size and make it big that, and that's the key when you take a picture with your phone it's going to be 72 dots per inch you don't want that you want at least 300 so that's what I want to show you now so right here I go to the canvas and you will see the canvas information it already tells me that the dimensions if you can see here um, can I zoom in on this let me see if I can zoom in on that so you can see it better there um, so it's 8100 pixels wide and 6300 pixels in height okay so that's the well that's too too close to do that the, tw the 27 by 21 is what it works out to in inches and here's the key number right here 300 dpi dots per inch am i zoomed in enough can you see that right oh i don't want to knock the camera too much 300 dpi and you can do that with a lot of different programs you don't have to have procreate that's just the one i'm using so now i have it 300 dpi and you see all the corners are straight everything's straight so i like it the way it is so now what I'm going to do, let me back up the camera. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to send it. I'm going to share it with AirDrop as a JPEG. And it's exporting. And I'm going to share it with my MacBook, my, my computer. And it'll go to it. And it's dinging. And it says it's sending. And it says it was sent. So that's what I need to do. So now I'm going to turn off the camera and turn it back on when I can go shift the uh, angle of the camera so you can see the the um the screen on my computer this was the ipad now we're going to go to the computer oh wait one more thing one more thing i want to show you so on the lower right hand corner is where i normally will sign the painting i will also sign the painting or the card on the back um i haven't done that yet and there's a reason why i don't do it until the last the very last thing let me show you why because if I signed it on the bottom there and then I took a picture of it, I might crop it off because it might not fit perfectly. So what I do, watch this. I enlarge this really big and then I go to another layer on my uh, Procreate app and I go to the pen, the ink setting and I'm going to use a, uh, hmm, I guess a studio pen is good make it black ink and I'll turn off that layer with the picture and I'm going to put my name on here now oh it's a little bit too big all right make it smaller a little too big all right now I'm going to write my name this is the way I sign my paintings it's a kind of a logo that I made up a long time ago for my name and yes I don't put Papa paints on the pictures although I have done that a couple of times. Some people ask me to do that. All right, so I'm just putting my name, Larry Whitler, 2024. Now you might say, that looks awfully big, Larry. Well, you're right, it is big. 
So watch this now. When you squeeze it down, it's still kind of big. And what I want to do is then grab it and make it smaller and just put it in the bottom corner so somebody can somebody can see that on their card. When, this is when they buy a print of the card, not the actual card. So now you see the card is right there. My name is kind of small, but it's there. And if they want an actual signature, they'll have to meet me somehow. Most of the time, somebody buying it online is not going to run into me too often. But all right, so I'm done with the pen. All right, now I want to turn off the camera and go to the computer. Again, this is the iPad. We're going to go to the computer now. Okay, now this should be the final piece. I'm on, I'm on Redbubble. Since the other video I showed you how I do it on Fine Art America, I'm going to show you how I do it on Redbubble. And add, add new work is what I go to. On Redbubble, the site that Robert and I use is called the Art Cave. And um, I have to go to the the picture I just uploaded. Let's see if I can just drag it in there. There it is. So there it is. And I'll give it a title. I'll call it Girl in a Floppy Hat. <laughs> okay. And uh, I'll tag it with um, watercolor, um, art, um, girl, floppy hat, um, summer, you know, all those words that you think might allow somebody to find a garden. Maybe she's in the garden. Dappled light. Dappled sunlight. Okay, so all of that. And then in the description, um, a young girl poses wearing a floppy hat on a sunny day. Okay, just something simple to get through this. Now, what it does is it puts it on these products. I am not a fan of all of these things. <laughs> In fact, it depends on what the picture is. So if it's a face, which is what we're working with today, you can see, I'm not so sure I like that on those faces. So I can disable all of these. Um, just, just hit the disable button. Let me show you one, like this hat, for example. Okay, I'm gonna disable it because I don't really wanna sell that picture on that hat. And let me back it up so I can show you many of them. I don't want to, <laughs> I don't know, those shirts looks kind of creepy. So just hit all these disable buttons, disable button. Now, I kind of like it on the magnet. This is a magnet, so I'm going to enable that one. And I can enable it on the, the phone case here, the phone skin, whatever they call that. Um, so this is what I do. I pick and choose what I want it on. The mouse pad looks good. The pillow is kind of creepy. So I'll take that off of there. The shower curtain is kind of creepy. Um, here we go. Prints, cards, and posters. So this is the main thing I want right here. Prints, cards, and posters. Okay. Am I on the right one? Yeah, that one. So that's what I want. I want that enabled. I'll keep the pouch and I'm going to come back to that. So here's a dog mat, cat mat, pet, pet blanket, scarves. We can turn that off. The cup, we can turn that off. All these things, maybe I'll keep it on the notebook. Somebody might like it on the notebook or the drawstring bag or the clock. Just for the sake of shortening our video here, I'm going to keep it on all these other things, okay? But the one I really want to pay attention to is the cards. These are what I'm mostly interested in because this is a card and somebody might want it as a card. Now, the picture I'm using as an example is not a good example because it's a, a girl's face, but you get the idea if it was a landscape or whatever. And then at the bottom of the screen, it's going to ask you what kind of media it is. I'm going to say it's a painting and what kind of a collection it is. It's not part of a collection. Is it mature content? I'm going to say no. Um, and then right here it says default product in your shop so we want to make that the cards um so let me find them here do they have greeting greeting card right here so can you see that right there where it says greeting card in the blue so that's what i want to be the featured product whoop it went to t-shirt i don't want that 
Oh, greeting card. Okay, so greeting card is what we want. Now I agree with all the red bubble stuff. Put an X, a check mark there, and save the work. And it's really that quick and that simple. It takes a little bit longer when you're really going through all the different uh, pieces of products that it can be on. Um, but here's the thing. Here's the thing. I, I've had people ask me, "Is it really worth it? Is is the is the stuff good?" Well, let me tell you something about, first of all, is the stuff good? Let me, let me turn the camera around. So anyway, so here we go. Uh, here's the listing. Girl in a floppy hat. Can you see that? Girl in a floppy hat. Um, and all the products that it's on. And the one that we want to pay attention to the most. And we didn't really want some of these things, but that's okay. We're, and then they have the art prints. I kind of like them too. Um, the postcard. The poster, the acrylic. So I think, I think the greeting card must be listed as a postcard on here. See, I don't really use Redbubble that often. In fact, well, I take that back. I use it a lot, but I uh, I mostly recommend people go to um, uh, Fine Art America or Pixels. Not because Redbubble's bad, but because for a card, they print all the way edge to edge. And see here on, can you see that? It doesn't really go all the way to the edge on that one. And I wish I could show you the whole thing, but I don't see it there. But anyway, let me, let me turn the camera around and, and finish this video. All right, so that's really the whole thing. I hope I didn't take too long to explain that. But the, the process is pretty simple. You take a picture of the card, you process it with your photo processing app or, or software, whatever you want to use. Again, in my case, I use Procreate, you could use Photoshop, you can use any of them. Try to make it at least 300 DPI, try to make it at least 5,000 pixels on the short side, I think, or at least 5,000, okay? And, and then when you have it nice and the and you can adjust the color, you can do all that. I add my signature digitally because on the actual card, I will now add it with a pen. I don't have it nearby, but I'll take a pen before I give it to anybody, which this particular card, probably not gonna go anywhere. <laughs> you never know though. There might be somebody who would appreciate that card. All right, so let me just real quickly talk about the quality. This is, an issue that came up with it from a couple of comments is the quality good i have not ordered a car i have ordered a card from pixels it hasn't arrived yet but i have ordered prints from pixels and let me tell you something they are great i have ordered prints from redbubble and let me tell you they are great but i have not ordered a card the cards on redbubble as i showed you they have a white border i'm not really that keen about that um there is another site I use called artpal.com. Um, that's pretty good. I don't think they have cards though. They just have prints. So those are the things. So is the quality any good? I think the quality is good. I think when people say they had a poor experience, it's because they maybe didn't do what I just showed you. They didn't bring it up to 300 DPI. They didn't make sure it was focused. They may have taken a picture in poor lighting. There's so many things. As you saw, I used my phone. Probably you could do better with an actual camera, but I, look, I'm doing this because I wanna give cards to people. It's really more about giving the cards away. I only put them available as prints because quite often people will want, let's say somebody wants the card, this particular card, and it's $105. And then, oh, that's a little bit high. Yeah, I know, um, but it's a piece of art. Oh yeah, but it's still too high. How about 45? And that's when I go down to 45 or 75 or whatever, but I bring it down. 45 is the low because you got to mail it. That takes away at least $10. So, 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 um, and if 45 is still too high, I said, why don't you just buy a print? They're only like $2.95. If you buy 10 of them, you know, or if you just buy one, it's like $4.95. It's a lot cheaper. 
And then the other thing is, I buy them sometimes. I buy them for whatever my price is, which I think is three ninety five, or I guess I don't know. I don't know what it is, but I buy them. And Robert and I will then donate the prints to the church, and then the church will sell them for a dollar or more or whatever. And and you know, or we just give them away. I, I think people really like the the hand the the originals. And so most of the originals do get um, d given away. Um, so I want to talk to you oh, about the price. Oh, and people say it's a ripoff. People will say in the comments that I had on the other video, people were saying that Fine Art America and Redbubble and Art Pal and all these things are ripoffs. Well, let's look at it for a second. Um, Redbubble costs nothing. So when they sell a print, you make money off of it, and so do they, and that's only fair that they do. Um, Fine Art America is like $30 a year, so is that a ripoff, $30 a year? If you had a shop on you know, Main Street <laughs> of your town, you had a shop, there's no way you're gonna pay rent $30 in a year. Now, some people say you can never sell anything on those sites. I do sell things. I have um, a background in marketing because I worked in radio for for 30 something years. So I understand and hopefully I can convey to you, you don't have to be a genius and you don't have to have worked in in the media for 30 something years. Just understand one simple fact that if somebody doesn't know about your product, they're not going to buy your product. Simple as that. So how do you get them to know about the product? Well, what do you do? You can advertise, you can pay for advertising, but let's say that's not what you want to do. It's not what I want to do. So what do I do? I use Twitter, which is now X. I use Facebook. I have a couple of different accounts on Facebook. I have um, Instagram. It's, I love Instagram. I have um, Tumblr. Um, I have LinkedIn. I have that other one. I can't remember what it's called. But the other one I like a lot too. I like them all really. What's that one called that I use? It's called uh, Threads. It's called Threads. And I use them all. And I just put the, I just put the, the, um, the pictures of the cards or the paintings if it's not a card. I put them on the site. Everybody knows who I am. They ask questions, is that available? Is that for sale? I'd love to have that one. Um, and then what I do is I will send them a link. I'll say, you know, I have it for sale. The original is $105. <laughs> I laugh because it never sells for that. But, um, or you can buy a print. And I'm telling you, um, I don't sell a lot of them, but I do sell some. And I don't push that hard. I'm not that big of a salesperson. I'm not trying to make a ton of money from this. I I want you to know that you can probably do way better than I do. Um, and, and in fact, look look around on YouTube. There are some artists who do really well. There's a young lady who um, sells her work on Pixels or Fine Art America, and she does fabulous. Okay, so I tried to get everything done quickly, and I know I didn't. Hopefully this video helps you understand how to process and prepare the artwork for selling online. Okay? If I didn't answer any questions, please ask them. And uh, thank you for subscribing and thank you for uh, joining the uh, Facebook group, which is called Papa Paints. It's a Facebook group. I'll put a link on the thing here. All right, you guys. <laughs> I know, I'm a little bit long-winded with this one. <sighs> All right, so I'll talk to you later. Bye.